Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about different types of gears and gear drives. So as we discussed, what is gear? Gear is a tooth part that meshes with another tooth part to transmit power to change the speed or direction. So what is drives? Drives are nothing but mechanism used for transmitting power and motion from prime mover to the driven machine. So what is prime mover? Prime mover is power source. So it may be electric motor, IC engine or maybe different types of turbines. So basically drives are mechanism which transmit the power from the power source to the particular machines. Now we'll be discussing gear drives. So first very simple is a spur gears. So before start with the types of gears and gear drives we'll discuss a simple terminology about gears. What is gear ratio? Gear ratio is the number of teeth of larger gear to smaller gear. So we define gear ratio or velocity ratio as angular velocity of a driving shaft to the angular velocity of driven shaft. So we'll discuss the different terminology and actual numerical part in the next lecture. So here we'll just go for the types of gears. So first type is a spur gear. So spur gears are nothing but the gears for which the teeth are cutting along the axis to the shaft or the teeth are cut parallel to the axis of shaft. So in this diagram 2D sketch you can see there are two circles shown by a center lines they are called as a peach circle. So what is a peach circle? Peach circle is an imaginary circle passing through the midway of gear tooth. So the two gears meshes with each other at peach circle diameter. Always two peach circles are at tangent to each other. So most commonly used gear drives are spur gear drives. There is something about spur gears why we use normally spur gears because in case of spur gears teeth are parallel to the axis of shaft. Spur gears are used to transmit the power between two parallel shafts and most common the teeth profile on the spur gear is involutes. So basically we may have two types of gear profile teeth either involute or cycloidal. So what is the advantage of a spur gear drive? It is easy to manufacture the cost is less so we can say cheaper as compared to the other types of gears and the efficiency is comparatively high for spur gears. Limitation for spur gears are operation is noisy. Second not suitable for high speed applications and the power transmitting capacity for spur gear drive is low and it can't take heavy loads. So these are some limitations for spur gear drives. So as you can see in this diagram, these gears are always rotate in opposite direction. You can see the driver is A which rotates in anti-clockwise whereas driven gear is B which rotates in clockwise direction. So this is a basics for a gear drives. So the next gear is helical gears. So for helical gears, the teeth are cut at an angle with respect to the axis to the shaft is around 12 to 14 degree which is called as a helix angle or psi. So these two gears they are in helical shape the teeth are in helical shapes they are cutting with particular angle as mentioned helix angle. So in case of helical gear the power transmitting capacity is greater than spur gears. It takes extra or heavy load compared with spur gears and as the engagement of the teeth in case of spur gear it is not sudden it is gradual line contact so the operation and the noise is less compared with the spur gears. So you can see this diagram 2D sketch where the two helical gears are connected so they are called as double helical or herringe bone gear or the structure is like honeycomb so it may be termed as honeycomb gears.
नेक्स्ट गियर इज वम एंड वम गियर्स और वम एंड वम व्हील सो फ्रॉम दिस एनिमेशन टू डायग्राम्स विल गेट टू नो एज वम यू नो द शेप लाइक profile and the uh, motion of the worm so this smaller one is called as a worm whereas the larger one is called as worm wheel or worm gear so what is the advantage of this gear drive so you can observe in this worm and worm gear drive the axis of the two shafts they are not intersecting each other as well as they are not parallel to each other so we can say they are perpendicular and non intersecting so when the two shafts are non parallel non intersecting we can use this gear drives so basically worm as a smaller one it is in the form of thread which meshes with the larger one which is called as a worm wheel or a worm gear it is used for non parallel non intersecting shaft or axis of the shaft very important for worm and worm gear drives they are used when gear ratio or reduction ratio required is extremely high and it is a non reversible so meaning of non reversible is worm is always a driver and worm gear is a driven so that is the very important property or the phenomenon related with the worm wheel drive means worm gear cannot drive the worm some important characteristics you can say for the worm gears worm gears are compact than spur helical b wheels they are used for very high reduction ratio up to 70 as to 1 these gears are self locking and non reversible as we discussed they are non reversible operation of gears is silent and smooth limitations or disadvantage of worm gears are the efficiency of worm gear is less worm gears are more expensive than all the types of gears and the third one these gears are difficult to manufacture so most common applications from worm and worm gear drives are steering mechanisms hoisting devices cranes dam gates and the lifts next type of gear drives are bivel gears so again in this we have two types straight bivel gears and spiral bivel gears so you can see on the right side there are two gears one is green and another one is blue or you can say gray color gears at the bottom so this tooth of this bivel gears are or they can be cut in a straight or in a spiral spiral truncated conical surface bivel gears are normally used for the shaft which are perpendicular to each other so when the two shafts are perpendicular or we can say it is intersecting we can use bevel gears so applications are differential gear box so the two types of bevel gear one is a straight bevel gear another is a spiral on left side you can observe the teeth which cut on this truncated cone they are not exactly straight they are in a spiral form so they are called as a spiral bevel gears from left diagram whereas on right you can observe the teeth are formed in a such a way that they are forming a straight truncated cone so they are cut in a straight way so that we can say this gears are normally called as a straight bevel gears or simply bevel gears last one is rack and pinion so to convert a rotary motion into a reciprocating or a linear motion we have this type of gears so what is rack rack is a straight gears of infinite radius so you can observe in the animation on the right side a straight gears having infinite radius that is a straight teeth are cut we may have helical helical teeth also rack gear meshes with the pinion and convert rotary motion of pinion into a reciprocating motion of rack or it may be vice versa also so this is very common to convert rotary into reciprocating motion we use a rack and pinion always remember the smaller one rotary gear is called as a pinion and rack is a straight gear which is infinite radius application of this rack and pinions are it is used in fitting mechanism reciprocating devices or the drives like 
lathe drilling milling machines you can observe this machine drilling machine and their exaggerated view of rack and pinion motion so we can convert the pinion rotary motion into the reciprocating motion of the drilling machine work table which can slide up and down so i hope you guys like this video in detail discussion of a gear parameters the numericals on gear will discuss in the next lecture thank you